Let's say you were left with a very large collection. Maybe it's a bunch of totes, maybe it's a bunch of safes, or a safe full of coins, and it's a little bit overwhelming. Stay tuned to find out what you need to do with your inheritance and how to sell it. My name is Daniel and you are watching Coin Help You. Thanks for watching my latest video. Today, we're going to discuss estate collections or collections that were left to people, boxes of coins, totes of coins, safes of coins, or just a big safe full of coins or a house full of coins. You know, there's a lot of ways to handle this, but there's a couple that I'm going to recommend, um, you know, the quick way, and then I'm going to recommend the slow way. And we'll uh, talk about a few pointers, uh, you know, a lot of it, try to throw a lot of information in one video to help you out. But really, um, it comes down just to a few steps that you need to do or that you can do and we're going to go over those. You're left with a bunch of coins. Now it depends on what you're left with. You know some people are left with a lot of safes, a whole house full of coins. They're stacked everywhere. They're put in cabinets. They're just everywhere. I've seen that before too. And then I've seen totes. When you're left with coins and you don't know anything about coins, you have three options. One you can take it all of it and have an auction house come in and you'll pay them about 20% and they may or may not know what they're doing about coins and but they'll sell them for you and you're done with them. You don't have to deal with them anymore. The second one is is call the dealer up and say bring your U-Haul and they'll go through it, praise it, uh, pay you a, a better price more than likely than you're going to get through the auction house because they're going to know what they're looking at or sell it yourself. The longest or at least the one that takes the most time and knowledge and effort is selling it yourself. You know, one thing about selling it yourself, you're going to have to deal with a lot of things like fees. You're going to try to deal with people in general, and you're going to take pictures, or you're going to have to call people up, or however you're going to sell it. Put it on Craigslist, eBay, WhatsApp, you know, any of these sites, you're going to have to deal with people, and it's going to take you a while. I know for a fact what it takes to sell online, and it's a full-time job. And I do this every day. You know, it's not something that, you know, I recommend for someone to do. Um, you know, that's why I'm going to recommend a certain steps to go through if you do want to actually sell it on your own. If you do want to sell it to a dealer, I would call. Call the dealer up or take a box and just get an idea of what that seller, what that dealer is going to, you know, pay you for that box and see if you're comfortable with that based on what they're selling for on eBay. So before we actually get started into the steps, what I want to, to talk about first is, okay, one of the things, here's some tools. I'll show you what to use. You can go into here, monthly gray sheet, and you can choose a monthly gray sheet, a single issue. You can PDF download, buy now, $35. Sign in, get you an account. And then here's the mailed magazine. You can get the magazine in the mail, okay? Then if you want to know how much it's going to cost you to sell it on eBay. they got eBay fee calculators. You can find all kinds of online eBay calculators. You'll put your sold price, your shipping charge, what your item costs you, um, if you're a top rated seller, whether you have a store, you know, and you can choose different countries on this one, but there's different ones. And then there's one over here that's actually an extension for Chrome browsers. If you have Chrome and use it, you can actually find out how much it's going to cost you to sell something and how much profit you would make on it. These tools are very important for you to find out what you can sell something for and how much you can actually make on it. You know, if you have zero in it, obviously your profit's going to be 100%, but at least they'll tell you the fees and how much it's going to cost you. You can figure that and, and compare that to what a dealer will pay you, plus take your time. You know, none of these calculators figure time in, and it takes a lot of time to take pictures. It takes a lot of time to list coins and sets and to deal with prices and find out what the price is worth. So after you have your tools, and let's, I'm, this is for people who actually want to handle and deal with their collection. I mean, you really don't need to do all this, but if you have a huge collection, if you want to handle the collection yourself, it's, you, might, you might as well get the issue. Um, that way you have it in front of you, and you can look through it and learn a little bit about it and just become a dealer yourself for a little while. You know, now, 
one of the things to me, and this is what I would do, most collections, it seems, are loaded with modern proof sets, mint sets, and coins in general. So my, the first order of business for me, and what I recommend, is to take all your proof sets, all your mint sets, all your modern commemoratives, uh, modern coin rolls, okay? And we're talking about, you know, proof sets from after, you know, uh, 70, uh, if they have the Kennedy half, obviously, because that's 40% silver and they're worth a little bit more. But anything after 70, you know, doesn't have much of a premium. I mean, they've, you know, they've got, I guess I should say they're worth something, but they're not worth a whole lot. Until you get into 95, the silver set, uh, then you have the 99, which is worth a little bit more. Uh, the 2012 S silver is also a little bit of a premium, but you'll see that when you're looking through these. And the same thing with silver eagles. The 94 is a little better proof. You definitely know that's got a premium on it. Um, so you just kind of want to look at that when you're looking at your gray sheet, and then you'll know that that's something you might want to set aside. Okay, or if you do, you want to mark it. And along with the modern, you want to look for anything that has receipts like HSN, .gov Mint, Bradford Exchange. All that stuff will be lumped together by itself as well, along with the modern stuff, because more than likely they paid, whoever left this to you paid way too much for it, and the, there's not going to be that premium on them. So that's the kind of thing you just kind of want to set aside as well. So once you get all your modern stuff out, and put it in totes, organize it, or however you want to do it, then you'll probably find that a lot of that safe, or a lot of the safes, or a lot of the collection is gone. Because that take they're bulky. That stuff it takes up a lot of room, and you'll find it maybe a little bit more manageable that you got the modern stuff out of the way. You're not going to get a lot out of the modern from anyone. I know people just don't want to pay a lot for it. And when you do want to get the maximum amount of money out of it, you're going to have to wait for that buyer to come along. So you can be listing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of items up, and you're going to have to wait for the buyer to come on to pay the price that you feel like is you're comfortable letting it go. Whenever a dealer will pay you, you know, sometimes they'll pay 50% of gray sheet for some of it. I'm not saying all of it. I'm just saying there's some real common stuff like a 71 proof set. You know, that's one of the things that they'll pay, you know, 50% back a bit on. Some things they'll pay 35. You know, sometimes they'll pay 20. It's just going to depend. They're going to pay back a bit, but at least you know what you're going to get, and you can calculate that up and think if you're comfortable with that, then you can let it go. And I know this is kind of complicated. I get it. I mean, if you want to learn varieties, you can go through all these proof sets and modern stuff and look for varieties. I know the proof sets do have some. You can do that, too. Then the next thing that I would do is the 90%. And when I say 90%, I'm talking about dimes, quarters, and half dollars that are 1964 and back. You know, basically, you're walking liberty. Your Franklin halves, your Roosevelt dimes, your Washington quarters, and even some of your Barber halves, dimes, and quarters. Uh, there are some better dates in the Barbers and the Walkers. So you, that's good to know. You'll have the sheet there, or at least you have eBay. You can find that out. But the rest of it is going to be 90%. And if you do sell it online, you're probably going to end up selling it for less than melt. The Walkers, maybe not so much. Sometimes the Franklins, you're not. But the Washington quarters and the dimes, you're definitely going to end up selling for less than melt if you try to sell it online unless you want to wait for that buyer because you got fees and things with eBay or wherever you're selling it or PayPal fees and things like that. So one of the things I would do is put that 90% aside, put it by itself, and after you've you know maybe looked at it a little bit, see if there's any dates or anything that might be special. You know, and then you want to go through your wheat rolls as far as if you have um, 58 and back. You know, some of those wheat rolls can be worth a little bit of a premium if they're BU. If they're not, then you're looking at pretty much getting uh, two cents a piece from a dealer. I mean, you know, like I said, if you're doing this on your own, then you're going to have a gray sheet, and you'll be able to look through and see what dates you might want to look for. And it's going to take you a little bit of time. You want to take your 90%, and some of that you can probably unload yourself to, or unload to a dealer as well. The thing about a dealer is, is that they're going to pay you less, but once you calculate your time and your fees, you're pretty much getting about what the dealer is going to pay you uh, for a lot of that stuff. You know, if you're wanting to be a dealer, I mean, that's different. Go ahead. I mean, take it to the shows. But I can tell you the modern stuff is not selling for that much at the shows. I see dealers with modern stuff all the time, and it hardly sells. You know, it's all going to depend on what's in that collection, what's been left in it, what's uncirculated, what's not. I mean, you got some uncirculated 90%, you know, like, uh, let's say, uh, early quarters, uh, worst in quarters. 
you know, they're uncirculated original rolls. See, original rolls that are uncirculated are a little bit different. So that's one of the things, too, you want to know when it comes to your 90% too. Then I recommend taking all the silver dollars and putting them to the side. Your Morgans and your Peace. Um, you can definitely go through the dates on those and make sure there's any better dates or not. Um, but that's one of the things that uh, will probably be bought separate, looked at separately by the dealer. Or if you sell it, you're definitely going to have to piece it out to get the most money out of each one of them. Then it comes to a little more difficult part. You're going to separate or at least maybe organize the type coins, like your large cents, okay, your flying eagles, your Indian cents, uh, your seated coins, whether it be your seated dime, half dimes, quarters, seated dollars if you have them, seated halves, you know, things like that. You're going to separate those. Uh, colonials, if you have any colonial type coins or any coins you have questions with. You want to put those aside if you can, if you can put them in holders or just, just put them in a box where you kind of organize them a little bit. You can put them by denomination. Once you have all of it put together, you know, then you're ready to maybe take some pictures or check out some prices or, or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, you probably already checked some prices at this point, but you know, there's going to be some things you're going to be confused about and you can take it to a dealer or if you don't sell to them, they'll probably charge you something. Maybe they won't, you know, it all depends. Once you get down to all the type coins and all this stuff, you're probably realizing there's gold as well, or you already have. And obviously you're going to put your gold to the side. You're going to keep it over, off and you're going, you're looking at um, what you can do with your gold. Gold online with fees is hardly worth selling unless you've, like I said, you don't have anything in it, so you don't care what you sell it for, but you might be better off taking it to a dealer who's going to pay you 90 some percent for that. Uh, you, there are some dates that are worth more. Uh, small, like Indian heads, 250s, the $1 Indian princesses and the Liberty, those have a premium. Some of your five dollars will have a premium. The Indian head design has a premium, and some St. Gaudens will too. But most of your eagles, or most of your, and most of your gold eagles, and most of your Liberty gold, which has the, the lady on it, um, don't pretty much trading at about melt. Um, you know, I know people are like, "Wow, oh, man, I can't believe that." But yeah, you, know, you can get a little bit of a premium over it from a collector, but you're going to have to have collectors to buy it from. You. You, know, you sell it online, you're going to take less. You sell it to a dealer, you're going to take less. Now, I know it can seem very overwhelming when you're left with a bunch of coins, but you just got to break it down into the categories. You know, that's one of the things that you, that you have, most certainly have to do. So hopefully, you know, you, you've got your gray sheet. If you're ready to sell it yourself, if you're not, call a dealer up and tell them to bring the U-Haul. I mean, that's the simplest way. I wouldn't go auction, estate auction. I don't, I don't think that's a route to go unless they actually advertise nationally and online because if they advertise for you, you know, sometimes you can't get some more out of it. But just remember, the more you have, the less likely you're to get something out of it because it's going to be a bunch of duplicates. So you don't want to go to auction route. You know, in my opinion, you know, I would unload all the 90% you can. I would unload all the low grade Morgan silver dollars you can. And I would unload um, all the wheats that you can get rid of that you've maybe even if you've went through it that's fine your proof sets mint sets all that stuff i would just unload it on a dealer i call i just take, find a dealer and if they have to come out and get it let them come out and get it and be done with it and then you'll have your type stuff you'll have your gold you'll have your other stuff some of your gold you probably even want to unload too it's all about checking out how much stuff go for you know just getting rid of all the common stuff and the, the things there are the coins that you have a lot of that's the key here and then anything else that you might think might be gradable or extremely valuable, then you can have them handle it, maybe send it off to a larger auction house like Heritage or Legends or Stacks and Bowers. You know, that's how you do that. So thanks for watching my latest video. Please like, share, and comment, and have a great day.